What I'm discussing today is my Elongated Skulls of Peru and Bolivia book. And it's dedicated to Senior Juan Navarro, who is my mentor in Paracas, Peru. Here's Senior Juan holding a 20-month-old elongated head with, as you can see, reddish blonde hair. The Egyptians supposedly had elongated heads, but what we do know is that this was a phenomenon around the world, especially in ancient times. Different forms of head binding were used amongst the royalty, and this happened literally all over the planet, most commonly 2,000 years ago. But some of the skulls, like the one on the left, appear to be natural looking. Wherever you find a megalithic site in Peru, you find elongated skulls. And they come in many different shapes and sizes, like this one. This is one of the oldest, about 4,000 years ago, the Wankarani people of Bolivia. But they've also been found plentifully at Tiwanaku and Pumapunku, such as this one, which actually is on private property in the area. Some facial reconstruction has been attempted recently in Bolivia to see what they looked like. This is a baby found near Lake Titicaca, less than a year old. And the most fascinating one possibly is this one, Waiki, located about an hour south of Cusco. You can see that Waiki's body is the size of its head, or its head is the size of its body. Estimated to be about two years old because the foramen, or fontanelle, you can see on top of the head, uh, wasn't fully closed. But the teeth appear to be that of an older child than two years old. This was a 16-year-old princess who died at least a thousand years ago near Cusco, and it's possible that the Inca themselves may have originally had elongated heads, because several have been found in the Cusco area dating to the Inca times or earlier. And in tombs at Ointetambo, monstrous skull like that one. They've been found all over the highlands of Peru from antiquity. And this in the, this case is near Huaytara, east of Paracas in the highlands. You see that the head, again, is the size of the torso. This cannot be explained by simple binding techniques. The largest skulls in the world have been found in the Paracas, Peru area. And again, they come in different shapes and sizes, only the royalty. This is a map of the Paracas area, about four, uh, four hours south of Lima. And it's the Paracas people who did a lot of the so-called Nazca lines and figures before the Nazca ever existed. Again, the Paracas came in different shapes and sizes. It was only the royalty that this was done to. This is an obvious example of cranial deformation, but what about this one? Look at the size and the shape. How could you bind that shape? Now, all of us have two major suture lines, which you can see here, but many of the Paracas have only one. That's quite a mystery. And it's known by archeologists that the Paracas also created the famous astronaut as well as multiple other figures in the Palpa area between Paracas and Nazca and formed, created a great uh, city called Cahuachi. Now the Nazca, when they invaded Paracas, used the skulls for divination. And this is a classic Paracas with also the royal red hair. And again, a baby with reddish blonde hair. Great depictions have been done by artists such as Mark LaPlume here, who has done thousands of drawings of what the elongated skulls may have looked like, as well as Marcia K. Moore of CMR Studio, who has done three-dimensional renderings based on actual skulls. So she's fleshed these out to see what these people, the Paracas especially, may have looked like 2,000 plus years ago because the Paracas suddenly appear 3,000 years ago and disappear 2,000 years ago. But my job is not finished. There are many more to find in the field, such as this one. So again, this is my book. It's also available in Portuguese. 
This is where you can buy this and other books that I have done, 16 in total. And if you would like to see some of these specimens, then please come on tour with us.